play. The Wolverines knock off Purdue. We'll look at the highlights. We'll also go inside the numbers and see if it's red or black ink in collegiate athletics. And we'll scout the Wildcats of Northwestern Michigan's next Big Ten game. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay. Michigan Replay. The Wolverines knock off Purdue 42 to nothing. And any head coach in America will love you when you say shutout. And you got to feel as good as anybody about that shutout. That's probably the most pleasing thing about the game, Jim, was the fact that our defense got a really shared a big win and really set the whole thing up. And, it, and especially with the defense basically taking some heat in the past few weeks about the past, the shutout maybe gave them some confidence they needed. Well, I think that's true. And, I, I, you know, you, you know if kids continue to play hard, they're going to improve and they're going to keep getting better. And I, I think our defense is doing that. I don't say Purdue was the best test we could run into, but uh, they had Hunter and they had some potential there. But you said last week you had to get better. Even if the opponent wasn't that good, you still had to improve. And in this game against Purdue on a cold, blustery day, you did get better, I think. I think we got better, uh, particularly defensively, and I think offensively we got rolling in the second uh, half. Here we make some big plays, and Anderson started off and stopping him for a one-yard gain. Then we got a big break, much like it up in Minneapolis. It came through the kicking game, and Deion Johnson recovers a fumbled uh, snap by their punter here. Or really, it was a low snap. This is your first possession, and it looked like on the ground you were going to be able to do what you ha wanted to do against Purdue. Right. We got Ricky loose here, and Jim, was one of the things we wanted to emphasize, that in our past defense, and we started out that way, but we slowed in the first half other than a big pass to Desmond. Those are the only points scored in the first quarter, so it's 7 nothing at that point. We go to the second quarter, and Purdue starts to move on you a little bit. They started to move, and, and we knew they'd move the ball some. It's the keys keep them out of the end zone. And this is Hunter again, shows his ability. He scrambles for a first down here. But he has the speed, and he's still dangerous throwing the ball. One of the few passes they hit on you. Right. We didn't have the flat coverage here, and they got the fullback in the flat. And uh, we came up and still kept it to somewhat of a minimal game. Third and six, they try an option play, and I think Chris Hutchinson, uh, along with a couple other guys, we get them stopped there. And they gamble a lot. Here they are, fourth and nine, trying to go for it. Right, they got to delay a game on their field goal, so then it went to fourth and nine, so rather than kick it, they tried to pass, and uh, fortunately, we got them stopped. You come back and uh, start to go through the air because your running game started to slow down. Yeah, Desmond made, or excuse me, Elvis made a good move there and got the ball to Yale on a bootleg type of pass. And, jump back inside the guard, so that was a big play. This may be your biggest criticism of Jesse Jansen. Well, we did this two occasions, Jim. Uh, we fumbled the ball twice. I think this takes away a scoring opportunity. We had another one that put us in bad position, so I was concerned about that, particularly the first half. And they run the ball fairly well. They controlled the ball on you in the first half. That had to be worrisome. Right, because we didn't, con well, we did convert. We fumbled the ball. Now, here's Eric Anderson making an excellent play. On a third down, they try to cross us up with a counter. Jim, we're in man coverage. We missed that one. We're in trouble. Then the special teams come through again. Partially black kick puts you in good field position. Yeah, I think Otis Williams got a piece of that ball. We, we thought we could get some pressure, and you like to on a windy day because you're going to have a hard time returning the kick anyways, although Desmond did have one later. Here we hit Ricky on a screen pass. He does a good job getting outside. Steps out of bounds right there. We're just shy of the first down. Then the combination that... A lot of people are talking about to Desmond Howard from Elvis Gerback. Yeah, Elvis does a good job getting Desmond the ball, and he gets it to the right guy, as you know. And uh, Desmond can do a lot with it on his own afterwards, and that's the key. But that big play, other than the first drive, we were kind of slowed a little offensively, making some mistakes. Puts you up 14-0. That touchdown catch by Desmond Howard ties the NCAA record for consecutive games with touchdown passes. But it Halftime, 14 nothing in this game. You're not pleased, I don't think, are you? No, because I was very disappointed that we fumbled the ball. Then we also had a punt locked in there. And that, that those things, I, I just, you know, I just like punting. You know, I just, because <laughs> it's a sign that you're failing offensively. And we can't do it all the time. But, I mean, we get this quarterback's foot stepped on. He stumbles coming out from underneath center. And we just weren't sharp. But I don't think it was a lack effort, to be honest with you. I don't think so either. The second half highlights are coming up, but first we hear from Desmond Howard about the team's attitude going into the locker room at halftime with that 14-0 lead. We did sputter early, uh, you know, going into halftime 14-0. It's not a comfortable lead because they can score one touchdown and be right back in the game. So we realized we had to come out here and uh, 
for the points on the board in the second half, especially the third quarter. Ricky's run, his second touchdown was a big, big, big touchdown for us. It was a nice run by Ricky. He showed, I think, good second and third effort on that play. here and there and uh, our offensive line started clicking in the second half and that's when we started running the ball really well that opens holes for uh, Desmond. They heard Elvis Gerback talking about having to get some things going in the second half because that 14 nothing lead wasn't enough. What did you say at halftime to get things cooking? Well, it's just that we couldn't make the mistakes in the offensive line and Jim, honestly, they changed their defense. They had slid it one way all the previous games, slid it a different way on us, but you still had to make those adjustments sooner. In the second half, though, what got you off the dime was the defense again. Right, and here we get a big sack, and this is Mike Evans, and turning him back, putting him in a punting situation. Now we're able to get ourselves going. And you go with Ricky Powers a little bit more than you did in previous games running the ball. You were kind of switching up a little bit more. Was that by design, staying with Ricky? Yeah, and he was hanging on the ball a little better, and you worry about the weather and things. Here's a fourth down. It's crucial, you know. We made a number of third down conversions on short yardage we didn't get stopped but on two occasions we fumbled the football here's an excellent run by Ricky getting stopped keeps fighting keeps fighting and getting in that makes it a 21 to nothing uh, Michigan lead now you got to feel a little bit more comfortable because you are moving the ball on the ground yeah and that's what I wanted to try to establish and, and that's good that's a that's a very dominating type feeling there's Corwin Brown uh, Knocking, hitting the ball, really missing the first interception, but getting it on the second try, which is good. And that was on Matt Pike, who'd come in to replace Hunter, and uh, really, you handled him as well as you did Hunter. Yeah, I think so. We got a little pressure because you got a, a rookie in there, and that helps a little bit. Then we hit Desmond on a simple out pattern, and Wheatley makes a good run here for 15 yards. Uh, Showing his speed. He does have the speed to get to the outside. And then you go to your magic man. Right. Here's Elvis going to Desmond. Desmond makes a good catch. That ball's thrown a little bit behind him. And, of course, the quarterback in that situation wants to make sure he doesn't throw it out of the end zone. So Desmond had to come back and make a good catch on it. And that ties Ron Johnson's season touchdown record at Michigan and breaks. This extra point breaks Pete Stoyanovich's consecutive Big Ten point after touchdown. So J.D. Carlson gets in the record uh, He's breaking done an mode. Excellent job there. This was exciting, Jim. I thought this one was gone all the way. Desmond hit the shoot, and their kicker dove at him and really tackled him with his leg. But Desmond can hit a crease and he accelerates. Right here, you're going to see him make a move and accelerate fast. But the uh, punter's legs come and tripped him up. But uh, gives you great field position. And once again, you've had trouble running, so you go to the air on one of your early downs. Right. We try to mix it up a little bit. They were coming with some heavier defenses. And here, Elvis does a good job just getting the ball out to Yale on a third and four situation. So we're, we're moving the ball more consistently. We want a little more one back here. Here's an excellent catch by Yale Van Dyne. A good throw by Elvis, and he gets tackled on the one-yard line. Then you go over the top with uh, Wheatley, but yeah, you, you say this isn't as easy as it looks. No, we fumbled that ball at Minneapolis doing that. It's an excellent play, but you got you to gotta learn how to hang on that ball when you're jumping. It looks simple to you and I sometimes as spectators, but it's a little harder than that. Here's one of their big plays. In fact, they put 40 yards together here back to back. We let the ball outside. Now, that's a Florida State play. That killed us in Florida State, one of the same individuals. We can't allow that to happen with great people. Then they come back and they hit a curl route. They start moving the ball. They get down in here on fourth down. They go for it. We blitz them, and Randy Stark comes up with a big sack. And, Jim, the gratifying thing about this is that's the second group. And, uh, you know, you, you hesitate to think, well, maybe we should take them out. Maybe we should take them out. But they came through, and that gives everybody more confidence. They missed the field goal and preserved the shutout. And, and the whole sideline went wild on that one. Jim, anytime the defense gets a shutout, that's a big thing. As you know, playing in with teams, you know, that, that's the no-hitter, uh, you know, in uh, uh, baseball. So it, it's very important. Of course, it hadn't happened for a year and a half. I think Wisconsin in 89. You get a screen pass to Johnson, then Wheatley gets the ball. Shows good, strong running ability in your final drive to put the thing away. Right. And here, uh, Todd Collins goes out in the flat and hits Waller Smith for about nine yards. And Todd came in here and did a good job. As you indicated, Jesse did a good job on the screen. Here's Jesse on a nice run on fourth and one. Now he's hanging on to the ball a little bit better, and that's, that's very important, which I'm sure Jesse's learning. Here again over the top. Yeah, here goes Tyrone over the top. He didn't really jump that well. But again, we get in the end zone, and 
42 to nothing. It wasn't. He'll take it, right? Oh, yes, yes. There's no question about that. It wasn't that big of a margin throughout the game, but we got it rolling at the end. But again, it's a four quarter game. You aren't going to be perfect in every one, but you worry when you stutter at the beginning. You talked last week after you beat Minnesota about improving week in and week out, even on teams that you were the overwhelming favorite. Do you think you got that done against Purdue on Saturday? I think we did defensively. I know that happened. Uh, offensively, you're 50, still worried about the running game, 50, right? 50. Oh, yeah. You've got to run the ball. And there's a point in the game, just like, you know, a beautiful drive in this season was Notre Dame with six minutes to go in that game. Remember, we just put that ball underneath our arm and drove it down. The That's important to a football team. You feel powerful. You feel like you dominate, and you take all that enthusiasm and toughness out of the opponent. It's a big, big deal for Michigan to run the football. They've got the linemen in the backs to do it, and they'll get another opportunity next week. We'll be back and talk to you about the numbers of economics in collegiate athletics, but first we hear from the defensive heroes about pitching a shutout. Every week our goal is to improve more and more and more, and all this shutout did is, 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 is prove to us that we've been working and then we've been correcting our mistakes. You know, we still got a little mistake here and there, but we've been working towards being as the best defense we can, the perfect defense. Where do you want? Are collegiate athletics in dire financial straits? Recently, USA Today published a three-part series that would lead you to believe that some major college programs are drowning in a sea of red ink. The article indicated Michigan was one of the programs losing big money. But that's not the case. According to Michigan's Bob DeCarolis, the athletic department's director of internal operations, the numbers in the article are misleading. Every school has their own accounting system. I'm not saying that anybody's doing anything shaky, but everybody counts things differently. Uh, even sometimes within the university departments. And so that information in that article is not r truly reflective of what's really happening. Uh, you don't have to be a financial analyst to take a look and say, well, why is one university spending twice as much as the other when they're basically got the same programs? But some institutions have uh, facilities that are run, managed by the university. They staff it. The university pays the utilities, they pay the uh, property improvements, whatever, capital improvements. Doesn't, not pay by the athletic department, the athletic department never records that. But the university does. It's a cost to the university. Okay? It's a cost for athletics. Doesn't show up in the USA report. Changes the picture dramatically. Big pass to Desmond. Those are the only points scored in the first quarter. So at 7 nothing at that point, we go to the second quarter. Purdue starts to move on you a little bit. They started to move, and, and we knew they'd move the ball some. It's the keys keep them out of the end zone. And this is Hunter again, shows his ability. He scrambles for a first down here. But he has the speed, and he's still dangerous throwing the ball. One of the few passes they hit on you. Right, we didn't have the flat coverage here. They got the fullback in the flat, and uh, we came up and still play. The Wolverines knock off Purdue. We'll look at the highlights. We'll also go inside the numbers and see if it's red or black ink in collegiate athletics. And we'll scout the Wildcats of Northwestern, Michigan's next Big Ten game. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay. You can replay the Wolverines knockoff, Purdue, 42 to nothing, and any head coach in America will love you when you say shutout. And you got to feel as good as anybody about that shutout. That's probably the most pleasing thing about the game, Jim, was the fact that our defense got a really share in a big win and really set the whole thing up. And, it, and especially with the defense basically taking some heat in the past few weeks about the pass, the shutout maybe gave them some confidence they needed. Well, I think that's true, and I, I you know, you, you know if kids continue to play hard, they're going to improve and they're going to keep getting better, and I, I think our defense is doing that. I don't say Purdue was the best test we could run into, but uh, they had Hunter and they had some potential there. But you said last week, you had to get better. Even if the opponent wasn't that good, you still had to improve. And in this game against Purdue on a cold, blustery day, you did get better, I think. I think we got better, uh, particularly defensively, and I think offensively we got rolling in the second uh, half. Here we make some big plays, and Anderson started off and stopping him for a one-yard gain. Then we got a big break, much like it, up in Minneapolis. It came through the kicking game, and Deion Johnson recovers a 
fumbled uh, snap by their punter here. Really, it was a low snap. This is your first possession, and it looked like on the ground you were going to be able to do what you ha wanted to do against Purdue. Right. We got Ricky loose here, and Jim was one of the things we wanted to emphasize, that in our pass defense, and we started out that way, but we slowed in the first half other than the